Thank you, and uh, thank you both for inviting me to come give a talk. Again, I'm Noam Vanderwald, I'm a radiation oncologist uh, from Memphis, Tennessee. Um, at a, with a show of hands, how many people in here are radiation oncologists? That's one way to become an expert, I guess. All right, so uh, just some quick disclosures. So uh, again, just some definitions of the difference between short course versus long course chemo radiation. So again, short course typically is a five gray given per fraction for a total of five fractions, so 25 gray over a period of a week. The radiation is given at the entire pelvis and chemo is not typically given concurrently. And traditionally, patients were then taken to the operating room within about one to two weeks. Long course chemo radiation, again, is given usually at 1.8 gray or two gray per fraction. Again, 45 gray to the entire pelvis and then a cone down. Uh, the cone down is given differently depending on uh, your training. Um, and then uh, usually a total of about 28 treatments. And, you, and again, chemotherapy is given with uh, the radiation. And then usually or traditionally there was about a four to six week wait, maybe now more of an eight to 12 week wait, depending on who you speak to, going to surgery. So um, there are a ton of trials on chemo radiation therapy and rectal cancer. Uh, I'm a big proponent of the rule of three, so I try to show three trials, <laughs> at least on one slide. So again, these are some of the more famous short course radiotherapy trials. The most famous one I think is the Swedish uh, rectal study, the only trial that I'm aware of that actually showed a survival benefit to radiotherapy. Um, again, uh, that was also probably in the pre-TME era. Um, the Dutch TME trial also showed no survival difference, but did show a, a, a local control uh, benefit, local recurrent benefit. Um, so these are kind of the more famous short course radiotherapy trials. There are also several very famous long course radiotherapy trials. My first slide is actually specifically showing the ones from Europe. I'll kind of explain that a little bit later. Um, the most famous of these, I think, is the German rectal cancer study, which was a study of pre-op chemo radiation therapy versus post-op, um, favoring uh, the preoperative course, not so much because of the local recurrence or survival, but more because of uh, toxicity. The toxicity seems to be a lot less when you give chemo radiation prior to surgery. Um, of course, here are the US-based studies. Uh, at least the ones that I'm, uh, I think are probably the more famous studies, um, including the NACBP R04 study, um, which is probably the most recent one that I'm aware of. So this was actually a very uh, famous editorial that was written in 2012 by Bruce Minsky. Um, and essentially, it, sorry for the long, many words in this slide, but uh, his point here was that there was kind of a divide between uh, across the Atlantic on people taking kind of a more of a short course versus a long course approach. And he said that the lines were drawn, alliances were formed, and we sat at different dinner tables at the ASCO GI Cancer Symposium, with really the, uh, the, North, the North American approach being more of a long course chemo radiation therapy approach and the European approach being a short course approach. And the question is, is it time to get back to the dinner table? And I will say to my European colleagues, I'm, I'm happy to eat with you, especially if you invite me to Europe. So there have actually been four randomized trials kind of trying to compare short course versus long course. And in 2012, the uh, Bruce Minsky editorial was actually an editorial on the TROG trial. So I'll, I'll try to go over these trials uh, briefly. So the Polish one study was a study um, of uh, 312 patients with T3 or T4 disease. It was five grade times five, uh, again, the short course radiotherapy then uh, followed by surgery and then uh, supposedly optional six cycles of adjuvant <laughs> chemotherapy versus uh, chemo radiation therapy. And what they found is that the acute toxicity was higher in the chemo radiation therapy arm. Uh, but the past CR rate was much better in the chemo radiotherapy arm. Um, and positive margins were less in the chemo radiotherapy arm. Now, uh, it's important to note that uh, supposedly a lot of patients did not get adjuvant chemotherapy in this study. Um, and so if you're looking at overall survival rates, local, recurrences rate, local recurrence rates are a little bit lower, I think, in this study than what we're typically used to looking at. Uh, the TROG trial, this is an Australian trial, or the Australian group, Trans-Tasmanian uh, study. Again, 330-odd patients. Uh, this also included more patients, I think, with node-positive disease. Um, again, a uh, five grade times five within a one-week delay to TME. 50.4 uh, gray in the other arm and similar in terms of the number of cycles given of chemotherapy adjuvantly. 
Uh, I sh should have mentioned also in the Polish study, it wasn't clear how many of those patients actually received TMEs versus uh, uh, non-TME resections, but this study required TMEs. And as you can see, uh, again, there was a difference in terms of um, past CR rates favoring the chemoradiation therapy arm. Um, and interestingly enough, uh, even in the patients who had um, disease that was closer to the sphincter, there did not seem to be a difference in terms of local recurrences. Now, to summarize these two studies, essentially with standard long course chemoradiation therapy with four to six week delay to TME, it did not seem to improve local control, overall survival, or disease free survival compared to short course RT with one week delay to TME. But the longer course uh, chemo RT seemed to have better pass CR rates, questionable better R0 weight rates, um, and then higher acute toxicities, but no differences in terms of late toxicities. But the big question, I think, is nowadays, when, what if we give preoperative chemotherapy as part of the preoperative course? And also, what about delaying surgery after short course radiotherapy? And so luckily, we have a couple of new trials to look at as well. So the Polish two trial uh, was 500 patients, and uh, their short course actually included full FOX that was given with a delay to surgery. So roughly about six weeks a full FOX were given in between finishing short course radiotherapy and taking the patients to surgery. Um, again, adjuvant chemotherapy was optional. Uh, I think oxaliplatin was part of uh, the adjuvant chemo, but apparently was removed, or oxaliplatin was given as part of the chemo radiation therapy, I apologize, but then was removed in 2012. Um, and so you can see here, in terms of acute toxicity, this is any type of acute toxicity, there seemed to be a little bit more in the long course. But actually, when you look at grade three to four toxicities, there was no difference. Um, the R0 resection rate is actually pretty good in, in both arms. Uh, the past CR rate is actually pretty good, even in the short course radiotherapy arm, about 16%. Um, there was a survival difference, but I'm not really sure what to make of that, because you wouldn't expect a survival difference even with or without radiotherapy. So I'm not sure if that's real. Um, the next study is actually the Stockholm 3 study, and I don't expect you to be able to read this slide. The purpose of me showing the slide is that this was a complicated study. Um, the original design of the study was to have three arms, uh, which included a short course radiotherapy arm with one week to surgery versus a short course radiotherapy arm with a delay to surgery versus long course radiotherapy. Um, they had trouble putting patients onto this trial because nobody wanted to do the long course radiotherapy. I actually. I have to look at this again, but I'm pretty sure the long course radiotherapy did not include concurrent chemo, so it was actually kind of less than standard of care. And so they ended up actually allowing people to uh, accrue just to the two short course arms. Um, and that's kind of uh, explaining that again. Now, interestingly enough, adjuvant chemo, they, don't really have, they didn't really have a lot of data on who got adjuvant chemotherapy. That data only was available starting in 2007. And from what they had, only about 13, 13, and 19 percent on each arm actually got adjuvant chemo. So these are the, their results between, uh, at least in the initial randomized uh, uh, three-arm study. So um, the past CR rate was actually the best in the short course with delay at 11.8 percent. Um, Post-op complications were actually around the same with short course with delay and long course radiotherapy. They were the highest in short course with uh, direct uh, one to two weeks to surgery. So to summarize, it is a confusing study. It asks several questions, both in terms of timing of surgery and fractionation of radiotherapy. The three-arm randomization was actually underpowered. Uh, the long course RT arm was kind of non-standard. It wasn't given with concurrent chemotherapy. The role, role of adjuvant chemo is actually not all that well understood, but Based on the above studies, delaying surgery after short course radiotherapy or possibly including chemo preoperatively may help us improve that past CR rate, which has stopped a lot of US-based uh, radiation oncologists and surgeons from recommending short course radiotherapy. So there are actually several ongoing studies. Uh, this is probably the most popular or most well-known of them. This is the RAPIDO trial, which is a Dutch study. Um, I believe it has actually finished accrual. Uh, and so they are asking, they have a, this isn't actually patients who have a little bit um, more aggressive disease, so T4 or um, what appears to be, uh, um, or N2 disease, or lateral lymph node positive disease. So these patients are randomized to um, conventional preoperative chemoradiation therapy, 
uh, followed by TME, and then adjuvant, radio, adjuvant chemotherapy versus doing short course with uh, preoperative chemotherapy and then TME. And I, we will hopefully have those results within years from now, I guess. And their primary endpoint is the three-year disease-free survival, which I think is a very good endpoint for this study. Uh, now, obviously, uh, the other important question is what about uh, zero gray, um, which is the most convenient course of radiotherapy? So this is actually a Chinese study, I believe, or an Asian study uh, called the Four Walk Study that was published in the JCO in 2016. Uh, they had three different arms, which included uh, conventional chemoradiation therapy, um, total neoadjuvant chemotherapy with a full FOX6 uh, was given five cycles prior, and then also full FOX6 without any radiotherapy. And uh, they had, um, in their results, they actually showed that the past CR rate was higher with chemoradiation therapy, uh, and, uh, and downstaging, DS stands for downstaging, was also higher in that preoperative chemoradiation therapy arm. But, uh, you know, we'll, we don't have the, the, the long-term outcomes from the study to, you know, question whether or not we need radiotherapy at all. Uh, this is the PROSPECT trial, which I also believe has uh, finished accrual recently. Uh, this is actually a very important study that hopefully will help us, uh, will help guide us a little bit uh, about the role of radiotherapy in the kind of total neoadjuvant era. So this study um, was randomized to receiving total neoadjuvant chemotherapy, full FOX6, and then restaging the patients. And if the patients had had a good response, they were actually, the radiation therapy was taken out. If they did not have a good response, they received preoperative chemoradiation therapy before, before TME, and uh, versus the standard arm, which was preoperative chemoradiation therapy. Um, so hopefully this will also help guide us uh, a little bit about the role of radiotherapy at all uh, in the preoperative setting. So this is my current and kind of evolving uh, practice. Uh, I will say I think that standard of care for, for radiation and rectal cancer is really changing. Uh, I saw five, no, actually six rectal cancer patients this week, and all of them are being treated differently. So um, obviously I think it's really important for radiation oncologists to coordinate multidisciplinary care. This is not a treatment decision that we should be making alone. Uh, the surgeon's input, medical oncologist's input is really important, as well as the patient's input. Um, one of the, actually one of the difficulties I've had is convincing my surgical colleagues uh, to uh, approve short course. I think, uh, at least in the United States, they're maybe not as, as comfortable with taking patients to surgery after a short course of radiotherapy, um, but we're working on that. Um, if the patient is not eligible for a TNT approach or seems to refuse chemo or wants to try to avoid surgery, which I know a lot of patients do, um, or if they have T4 disease or the tumor is close to the internal sphincter, I currently favor a long course chemoradiation therapy approach. And what I mean by close to the internal sphincter, uh, my surgical colleagues like to have at least three centimeters from the internal sphincter, which unfortunately at this point in time is taking a lot of patients out of me being able to deliver a short course of radiotherapy to them. Um, in patients that are eligible for the TNT approach, I really am trying to put these patients on study. I think it's, it's the right approach is to, to have these patients be studied so we can kind of collect the data on them. And then in patients that are eligible for TNT but refuse trial, which unfortunately we do have patients that refuse trial, um, or patients who actually have maybe oligometastatic disease that we are tr still trying to cu cure, I currently favor a short course with delay, um, as long, again, as the surgeon is comfortable. 